Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, series number two of the MSA uh, seminar on scientific miracles in the Quran. Uh, last week we touched upon the, uh, the what is the Quran, the Quran on the universe and um, in the cosmos. And today uh, in our series two, we aim to cover the Quran on the secrets of the uh, seas and the earth. So, uh, yeah, we shall start now. Like if it moves. No, you, you need to use two fingers and mm. go up. Okay. okay. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Praise be to Allah, peace be upon the Prophet Muhammad and his family, his companions. Inshallah, by the will of Allah, we continue our uh, lecture series related to uh, scientific miracles in the Quran. Uh, last time we we talked about the Quran on the universe. And inshallah, by the will of Allah, today, tonight, we will talk about the Quran on the seas. Uh, the Quran on uh, the seas. For those who uh, did not attend the first lecture, uh, I would uh, recommend you to uh, uh, to have the first lecture uh, because last uh, time we talked about the Quran. What is the Quran? Uh, some information about the Quran. You need uh, to know it uh, in order to get uh, the whole idea about the scientific miracles in the Quran. So it's it's already in the YouTube and you can get the, the I mean, the link from brother Nemer. Uh, yes, but for, night, for tonight, we continue that uh, scientific miracles uh, in the Quran. So the Quran on the seas. The Quran in the seas. Allah the Almighty uh, told us about the seas in the Quran. And the first thing that I would like to present to you is the water of earth. The water of earth. What is the origin of the water of earth. Um, as Allah, the Almighty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, said in the Holy Quran, وَالْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ دَحَاهَا أَخْرَجَ مِنْهَا مَاءَهَا وَمَرْعَاهَا The corresponding of this uh, for, uh, two verses is this. And after that, he spread the earth, extracted from it, its water and its pasture. This is from the Quran, uh, chapter 79, verses 30 and 31. And the main point here in these two verses is this, extracted from it, its water. What does that mean? It means that the water in earth came from itself came from itself. So, the first is telling us that the water came of earth, came from itself. This is the Quran. Now we go to the science. What does the science tell us? Uh, the science talks about the origin of the earth's water. Um, 
the science tells us that um, after the form, after Allah formed the earth, it was really hot. And then a lot of volcanic eruptions took place. And from the craters of those volcanoes, uh, water vapor, steam came out to the atmosphere. And after that, the water vapor called down and was condensed in the atmosphere, okay, where the temperature in the atmosphere is low. So the water condensed and it began to rain. And it rained for thousands of years. And the result was oceans, seas, whatever, rivers and other water surfaces. Okay, this is what, what, what the science told us about what? About the origin of the water. It is really, as the Quran stated, أَخْرَجَ مِنْهَا مَاءَهَا وَمَرْعَاهَا أَخْرَجَ مِنْهَا مَاءَهَا وَمَرْعَاهَا Extracted from it, it's water and it's a pasture. Okay. Uh, this is the first Okay. I have a mouse. Can I use it? Okay. Now we go to another aspect in the Quran. Another miracle. It's the bar the barriers between seas in the Quran. Allah the Almighty said in the Holy Quran, "Maraj al Bahrain al Taqiyan, bainahuma barzakh la yabqiyan." And he released the two seas. This is the corresponding meaning of this, these uh, verses. He released the two seas meeting side by side. Between them is a barrier. So neither of them tran uh, transgresses. This is from chapter, Quran chapter 55, verses 19 to 20. Here, these two verses tell us that there are barriers between two seas, between two seas, that prevent them from what? From mingling with one another. This is what the, what the, verse, the two verses told us, that there, are, there, there, there is a barrier, there is a barrier between the two seas that prevent them from what? From mingling with one another. Okay, let's go to what? To the, the science, what does the science tell us about the barriers between seas? Okay. Uh, the, the science said that the water barriers between converging seas were discovered by what? By the oceanographers uh, that was in 1942. AD, it's, it's a recent what? A recent finding. Uh, so what does this tell us? It tells us that the water barriers, barriers prevent converging seas from what? From mingling with one another so that they maintain their properties separate. So they don't mix their properties, stay, without any mixing, temperature, salinity, 
density, every C keeps its, uh, I mean, I, I mean, its uh, properties without any changes at all. I will show you this this picture. Uh, this basic picture um, shows uh, the meeting of the Atlantic Ocean with the what? With the Mediterranean Sea. With the Mediterranean Sea at the Gibraltar cell. Here, see here, we have the uh, we have the Atlantic Ocean water, and here we have the Mediterranean Sea water. You see that the Mediterranean Sea water goes into the Atlantic Ocean water, okay, and keeps its properties without any change. The salinity is higher, the temperature is higher, and the density is lower. No mixing at all. So every sea uh -huh, keeps its properties without any changes, as the Quran stated. Uh, okay, we will move to another aspect. It is the barriers between seas and rivers in the Quran. Now, we are talking about what? About seas meeting what? Meeting rivers. We talked about what? Seas meeting each other. But now, rivers with what? With seas. Also, there are barriers between rivers and seas. As Allah the Almighty told us, Allah the Almighty said in the Holy Quran, وَهُوَ الَّذِي مَرَجَ الْبِحْرَيْنِ هَذَا عَذْبٌ فُرَاتٌ وَهَذَا مِلْحٌ أُجَاجٌ وَجْعَلَ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَخًا وَحِجْرًا مَحْجُورًا This is what Allah said in the Quran. Uh, the corresponding meaning of this, of this uh, uh, verse is this. And it is he who has released the two seas, one fresh and sweet, and one salty and bitter. And he placed between them barrier and prohibiting partition. This is from the Quran, chapter 25, verse 53. So this, this verse tells us that uh, there, are, there is barrier between the river and the sea. Okay. And there is what? There is a partition zone between the river and the sea. Okay? Uh, this is what the Quran tells us, that uh, the river and sea meet each other, but between them, there is a barrier and a partition zone. And everyone keeps its properties without any changes, without any changes. This is what the Quran told us. Now we come to the science. We come to the science. The science tells us about the barriers between seas and rivers. Uh, it was discovered uh, that the water of rivers meets uh, the salty water of seas. So fresh water of river meets the what? the salty water of seas to form what a partial zones of separation. And this is the picture that tells us about this aspect. Now, in this picture, it shows that the meeting between a river and a sea, it were in a place it's called a story. It's called a story. So look at this. This is the fresh water of the river. And this is the salty, the salty water of the what? Of the sea. And between them, the barchan zone of separation. It goes from the fresh water to the salty water. You see here is almost zero per thousand of salt 
in the river to the 33,000 uh, per, per, per thousand of salt. Say, it goes gradually, 10, 20, 30. This is the partial zone, but the river keeps its properties without any change, and the sea keeps its uh, properties without any change. Okay, so it's as the, the, the Quran told us that there is a barrier between uh, fresh water of river and salty water of sea. And this is what the recent findings of the science told us about this virgin uh, zone of separation. Okay, uh, we'll go to another aspect. Now, I'll show you a picture of what of the Gang River. This is a huge river. It's called Gang River. You know about it. Uh, the Gang River empties into the Bay of uh, Bengal. And you, we can see through satellites, we can see through the satellites, the, the, three, uh, the, the three zones that I told you about, the three zones. River, Parchan zone, and sea with different colors. You see, this is the river, and this is after the, the river is uh, it's called uh, in, in a different uh, color, and here it's a different color. It is the Barch uh, Barchan's zone, and this is the sea with black uh, color. Okay, now move to another aspect. Uh, before we go to another aspect, I would like just to contemplate with me. Uh, it was really impossible at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 13 centuries ago to see by naked, naked eyes the barriers or the Barcha zone. The barriers between seas or the barriers are barchant zones between rivers and seas. It was really impossible to, to see it through your naked eyes. Okay, so if, it's, if it was impossible, who told the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon about these barriers, about these barchant zones? Allah the Almighty told him because he got the revelation from Allah and Allah is the only one who knows every single secret in this planet. This, therefore, he told the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about uh, such phenomenon. Okay. Now, move to another aspect of miracles. It is the darkness and internal waves in seas in the Quran. Allah the Almighty said in the Holy Quran, أو كظلمات في بحر لجي يقشاه موج من فوقه موج من فوقه سحاب ظلمات بعضها فوق بعض إذا أخرج يده لم يكد يراها. The corresponding meaning of this uh, verse is this: or they are like darkness within uh, an unfathomable sea which is covered by waves. Open which are waves, over, over which are clouds, darkness, some of them open others. Uh, uh, when one puts uh, when one puts out his hand, therein he can hardly see it. Okay, now what does this verse tell us? It tells us about the darkness of deep seas, about the darkness of deep seas. Uh, and also the internal waves that there are, I mean, darkness, there is no light in the deep sea. And also there are internal waves in the sea. Okay, we can see the surface waves, but we cannot see the internal waves. Okay, now go to science. The science tells us about darkness in seas. Uh, uh, 
oceanography, the modern ocean, uh, oceanography uh, told us about the darkness of the darkness in the deep uh, of sea. Now, if you look at this picture, if you look at this picture, you will find uh, how light disappears once it goes down and down and down. Some of it is reflected at the surface of the water. And the other colors of the light spectrum, okay, are absorbed deep and deep and deep until 200 meters. It is the blue light that disappeared. At 200 meters deep, the last <coughs> color, the last color, which is the blue color, disappeared. Then it becomes really dark. You cannot see anything. Okay. This is the science told us that after 200 meters, no light. It becomes really dark. <coughs> uh, now, we know in the past, before they, before we, uh, they discovered the, I mean, the submarine equipment, it was really impossible for anyone to what? To dive, okay, to go down more than 40 meters in order to see whether it is dark or not. So at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was really impossible for anyone to go down until 14, uh, until 200 meters in order to discover, to see whether, whether it's dark or not. So it is Allah who told him about that, that there is darkness there. Okay. So, uh, now, come to the internal waves. It's really um, uh, interesting. You see, here, this, uh, this figure is about the uh, surface wa uh, waves and the internal waves. See, this is the surface waves or these are the surface waves here all up you can see them when we go to any sea you can see the what the surface waves by your eyes it's it's not that difficult to see but you cannot see the internal waves so therefore the um, oceanography discovered this that there are surface waves Okay, and there are internal waves. They did not see them. They did not see them. But with the special equipment, they could what discover these internal waves. Actually, uh, uh, under or in the surface waves, there is what the what, what is called the less dense water the less dense water in the up, up in the surface, that the water is, is less in dense, okay? And here, the water is what? Is dense. So, the, 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 this phenomena um, takes place in the sea. So there is, uh, there are water uh, waves and internal waves, as the Quran described. So, now, uh, I mean, it's really, it's really amazing for the Quran to describe to 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 describe the internal waves. I mean, to describe the surface waves, it's okay. Anyone can describe them because he can see them. But 
to describe the internal waves 14 centuries ago without any equipment, it's really, it was really impossible. It's, it's only one, it's only one way. It is only one way. It is a revelation from Allah who told the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him about the internal waves. So at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, peace be upon him, people did not know about this. They just summoned and believed that there are internal waves. They, 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 they did not question the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what's internal waves? No, but they believed, they submitted. Okay, but because the Quran is for every time, it's for the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the time and for all times. So now we can, we can, uh, I mean, find that there are internal waves through what? Through science who discover, discovered these internal waves by what? By special uh, equipment, not by naked eyes. Okay, we have a witness from the science, from the scientist. This scientist, his name is William Hay. He, these verses related, related to the sea uh, were presented to him uh, in order to give an opinion about that. Uh, uh, professor William Hay is a professor of oceanography from University of Colorado. Boulder, uh, Colorado, USA. Uh, he gave this comment after he uh, had the chance to go th through these verses from the Quran. It's, he said, I find, it, I find it very interesting that this sort of information is in the ancient uh, scriptures, meaning the Quran, of the Holy Quran and have no way of knowing where they would have come from. I mean, because he's, he's not a believer, okay? But I think it is extremely interesting that they are there and this work is going on to discover it, the meaning of some of the passages, okay? And see here, he was asked a very good question. He, he was asked about the source of the Quran. Okay, from where? From where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, wrote the Quran. He said, he said this, well, I would think it must be the divine, the divine being. What, what does the divine being? From heaven, from heaven. So, uh, another scientist, his name is, Dorja Rowe, he's a professor of marine geology. Uh, he's from, uh, he was teaching at King Abdulaziz University, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Also, he, uh, some of these verses were presented to this uh, professor to give comment. He said, it is difficult, it is difficult to imagine that this type of knowledge was existing at the time around 1400 years back maybe some of the things they have simple idea about, but to describe those things in great detail is very difficult. It's very difficult. So this is definitely not simple human knowledge. A normal human being cannot explain this phenomenon in that much detail. So I thought the information must have come from supernatural source. Oh. So for natural source, because he's not, he was not a believer. So supernatural source. Uh, why? Because it's really impossible for such information uh, to come from 1400 years ago. So he said that it is a supernatural source. It's, it's not a supernatural force. It is Allah who created the universe and who knows every single detail about the universe. Now, we come to another aspect. It is the Quran only. The huge sink in this planet, 
The huge sink of water in this planet is what? It's in the oceans and what? In seas and rivers. Okay. Uh, this huge sink, okay, provide, provides the what? The land with what? With water. With water through what? Through rain. Every year, every year, a certain amount of water evaporates. A certain amount of water evaporates from oceans, seas, rivers, and all other uh, water surfaces. And then it rains. And after it rains, it comes, the water comes back to the what? To the oceans and seas. The same amount. So no change in the amount of water in oceans and seas. It's the same, the same, but it is what? It is a circle. It is a circle. But the Quran tells, about, tells us about the phenomenon of rain, how it takes place. Here, Allah, the Almighty said in the Holy Quran, Alam tara anna Allah yuzji sahaban thumma yuallifu baynahu thumma yaj'alhu rukaman fatara al-wadqa yakhruju min khilal. This is the verse from the Quran. The corresponding meaning of this verse is, do you not see that Allah drives clouds? Then he brings them together. Then he makes them into a stack. And do you see the rain emerge from within it? Subhanallah, glory be to Allah. Uh, this verse coming from chapter 24, verse 43, describes the rain process, the rain process. The, the, from the, 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 from the uh, wind that drives the, uh, the cloud, okay, and they gather, and then they stack up, and then it rains. This is uh, from the Quran. This is what the Quran told us about the rain, how it takes place. Now, we have to go to where? We go to the science. The science Tell, uh, tells us about clouds formation. It is in a process. As the Quran described it. The Quran described it in one verse. The Quran described it in one verse. The whole phenomenon. However, if you go to science, you might find a whole book Talking about what? About the rain process. But here I will give you just only a summary about that. I'll give you a summary about that. About the process of what? Of rain. Now in this picture, as the Quran told us, winds drive what? Drive clouds, drive clouds uh, to an an area of convergence to a specific area, to a specific. So the wind moves uh, pieces of clouds to what? To an uh, to a convergence uh, area, as it is in this picture, coming from a, a satellite. Then after that, small clouds gather to form larger clouds as it's here. You see here, small clouds are moving to what? Are moving to a convergence zone, to a convergence zone here, uh, which gather together to form what? To, to form a bigger, a large, cloud. This is the second step in what? So the Quran told us about what? About the first step 
it is about what about the 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 the, the, the wind that moves what the small clouds to a convergence area okay and then after that they accumulate there the 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 the, the, the small pieces of clouds grow vertically one over each other one over in each other to form a big cloud it's called thunder clouds or cumulus uh, clouds you see here in this picture we have small what slow small clouds okay and they stack up one over another one over another one over another until they form a huge cloud that reach an area of atmosphere where the temperature is down it's cold there okay and when these clouds stack up and reach this uh, area in the atmosphere where is the temperature is 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 really down is low the what the water vapor in the clouds what condense condenses and then it rains until and then it rains you see here clouds stacked up one over another until they reach what they reach an area of low temperature okay then the water vapor uh, uh, develop into drops meaning water drops develop there okay and they these drops be become bigger and bigger and bigger until they reach a specific size that enable them to go down and it rains it is exactly as the quran described as the quran described okay now another aspect it is about heavy clouds in the quran Allah, the Almighty, said in the Holy Quran, وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُرْسِلِ الْرِيَاحِ وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُرْسِلُ الْرِيَاحَ بُشْرًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْمَتِهِ حَتَّى إِذَا أَقَلَّتْ سَحَابًا ثِقَالًا سُقْنَاهُ لِبَلَدٍ ميت فَأَنْزَلْنَا بِهِ الْمَاءِ فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ مِنْ كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ كَذَلِكَ نُخْرِجُ الْمَوْتَى لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ uh, The corresponding meaning of this verse is this and it is he who sends the winds as good tidings before his mercy until when they have carried heavy rain clouds we drive them to a dead land and we send down rain therein and bring forth thereby some of all the fruits thus will we bring forth the dead perhaps you may be reminded this is from the quran chapter 7 verse 57 the most important word here in this in this verse is this heavy rain clouds heavy rain clouds the quran tells us about the heavy rain rain clouds okay uh, go to the recent findings of science the recent science of scientific findings uh, tell us about the weight of the what of the clouds you know some clouds could hold up to 300,000 tons of water such as the thunder clouds I mean, if you, if, if anyone at the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam watched the clouds in front of his eyes, he would not, I mean, he would not think about the weight of this cloud. Just yes, only see clouds. But to determine the cloud, the, 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 the weight of the clouds, it's really, it's really difficult. 
I mean, it was impossible. Um, it is a mercy from Allah. What about if this these clouds, heavy clouds, uh, dropped at once to the surface of the land? What would happen? I mean, all beings would be destroyed, but Allah may makes it really easy for the, 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 the these drops of, of water to go down and down smoothly and without any harm at all to all beings. So that all beings get the benefit from, from the water coming from the, from the sky. Okay. Uh, and this phenomena was discovered by, I mean, a famous scientist. Uh, his name is uh, Philip Leonard. He's a German physicist uh, who received the Nobel Prize in physics in 1905. He is the one who described this phenomenon. Uh, now, come down to another aspect related to the miracles in the Quran. It is about hail and lightning. It is about hail and lightning. The Allah the Almighty said in the Holy Quran, وَيُنَزِّلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مِنْ جِبَالٍ فِيهَا مِنْ بَرَدٍ فَيُصِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءٍ وَيَصْرِفُهُ عَنْ مَنْ يَشَاءٍ يَكَادُ سَنَا بَرْقِهِ يَذْهَبُ بِالْأَبْصَارِ The corresponding meaning of this uh, verse is this. And he sent down from the sky mountains of clouds within which is hail, and he strikes with that whom he wills and affirms it from whom he wills. The flash of its lightning almost takes away the eyesight. The Quran, chapter 24, verse 40, uh, 43. Now, I would like to uh, I'd like to draw your attention to this word. The flash. The flash of its lightning almost takes away the eyesight. What does that mean? It means that the lightning is coming from the hailstones. It means that the lightning that you see is coming from the hailstones. I mean, if you contemplate about this, could anyone at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, any, uh, could figure out that the lightning coming from the cloud is from the hill, <laughs> stones? I don't think so. Uh, so, the verse indicates that lightning comes from hail. Okay, let's go to the science. Uh, how does lightning develop? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's described in this picture. Okay. We have this cloud. Okay. First of all, uh, in the upper part of the cloud, there are two, two things there. The, ha the hailstones and some crystals. And some crystals here in the upper part of what? Of the cloud. They contact each other. And the result of that is the electrons trans transport between these, between the hailstones and the what? And the crystals. And the result of that, the hailstones become negatively charged. This is the first thing. And down there, and down there, 
there are what's called the what? The splinters of eyes. The splinters of eyes. They are positively charged. And, and then the next step, the next step that it negatively it charged hail stones go down, drop down to the bottom of what? Of this, of this cloud. And the, the positively charged uh, splinters of ice go up to the, to the upper part of what? Of the cloud. During, during this process, during this process, when the hailstones, the negatively hail, hailstones go down to the upper part, to the lower part of the cloud, they discharge their what? Their charges and discharge, discharge uh, the lightning. So you see the process, it is as the Quran described that the lightning is coming from where? From the hailstones. So the negatively hailstones, when they drop down, they, they what? They discharge, they discharge uh, their charges and you see the lightning. Subhanallah. Glory be to Allah. I mean, who told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about what? About this phenomenon. At the time, there, there were no at all, uh, I mean, instruments, no uh, sophisticated uh, technology, whatever. It's only from one source. It is from revelation. It is from Allah. Allah who told, uh, told us the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa about these secrets. And the last thing is about the mountains. The last thing is about the mountains. Allah described the mountains in the Quran with a precise description. Allah the Almighty said in the Holy Quran, Alam naj'al al-arda mihada the corresponding meaning of this verse, have we not made the earth as a bed and the mountains as pigs? So now these two verses in the chapter 78, verse 6 to 7, tell us about the mountains, that they are pigs, that they are pigs. Now go to the science. The science tells us about the uh, mountains. Science uh, discovered that the mountains have deep roots under the surface. As a, as a matter of fact, the part of mountains under the, the surface is much, much bigger than the one up over the uh, surface. Okay. So, uh, these are the what, uh, a picture, a picture telling us about the deep roots. Here, say, this is continental, uh, continental crust, and this is the, man, the mantle, and this small is the top of the mountains. You see the top of the mountains? It's small. But in front of your eyes, it's huge. However, the roots of these mountains, it's much, much bigger, deep into the what? Into the crust of the earth. Okay. Another picture. You see here, this is the Alps, the mountains of Alps in Europe. See how they are small in the surface, according to this uh, picture, however, they have really huge, deep roots. See how huge? If you compare the roots of these mountains to the, the top of the mountains, it's, you can't, I mean, it's, the comparison is not that uh, 
you can you cannot you 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 cannot compare it. Uh, I mean, easily because huge huge deep roots in comparing to the top of the, the 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 top of these mountains that you can see. Another picture here. You see mountain roots. This is the continental crust, and this is the top of the of, of the mountain. And this is what the the science found. Okay, uh, Professor Emeritus Frank Press said in his book entitled Earth, uh, mountains. Listen to this: mountains have underlying roots. These roots are deeply embedded in the ground. Thus, mountains have a shape like a peg. Clear. The Quran said the mountains have roots, pegs, and also scientists said that mountains have pegs. They did, they could not discover this through their naked eyes. They discovered these through or by what? By sophisticated instruments, of course. The last thing is the rule of mountains. The rule of mountains according to the Quran. The Quran told, tells us about the rule of the mountains. Allah the Almighty said, وَأَلْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَ أَنْ تَمِيدَ بِكُمْ The corresponding meaning of this verse, and he has sit per mountains in the earth so that it would not shake with you. This is from Quran, chapter 16, verse 15. Uh -huh. The mountains stabilize earth. So that it does not shake. It does not shake. So this is what the Quran told us. Now the science tells the science tells us about the uh, the, the about the the, the uh, about these mountains, uh, about the rules, how they stabilize the what, how they stabilize the earth. It's according to the what the theory of plate tectonics. Uh, it tells us that the mountains work as a stabilizer for the earth. Of course, this knowledge was discovered only in 1960. 1960. Uh, it's 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 recent. It's recent finding. It's recent finding. So, uh, could anyone imagine at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? that mountains have deep roots? No. But it is a revelation from Allah. It is a revelation from Allah. Uh, Allah told the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about this. Finally, uh, with this scientist, he was asked about these verses in the Quran related to mountains, and he said this, uh, his name is uh, uh, Professor C uh, Professor uh, Sifada. He is a professor of marine uh, uh, geology from Japan. He was asked, and he gave uh, gave this this comment. I think it seems to me very very mysterious, almost unbelievable. I really think if what we have said is true, the book is really a very remarkable book. I agree. The book, which book? The Quran. He was presented uh, with these verses about the mountains. And he commented, he gave this comment that the Quran is a remarkable, remarkable book. So, he's a non Muslim. He, did, he, he does not believe in, in, in Islam or in the Quran or in the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu but he had to say the truth, that the book is very remarkable. Okay. Uh, conclusion. Final cl conclusions. Now, uh, these verses that I presented to you, 
uh, tell us about the greatness of Allah. That Allah created the whole universe in a precise manner. It goes in this precise manner millions and millions of years without any corruption. The water is there in the seas without any change. The properties of these seas are well kept. Uh, the mountains are there stabilizing the earth for millions and millions of years without any change, without any problem. What does that tell us? It tells us that the creator is one. The creator is one. Other, I mean, if there were two creators, the universe would collapse. The universe would, would, would collapse. You are, we are not talking about, I mean, one year or two years or three years, or we are talking about millions and millions of years and no corruption in the universe. It is a big sign that the creator is one. This is the first conclusion. The second conclusion is the Quran is the word of Allah. No doubt about that. Otherwise, you would find mistakes in the Quran. But because it is from Allah who revealed this scripture to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it means that the Quran is the word of Allah. No errors, no mistakes. We are not talking about art literature. We are, at, we are talking about scientific matters, scientific findings. The Quran talk about these scientific uh, things in a precise manner without any single mistake. It means that the Quran is the word of Allah. Allah kept guard, uh, I mean, preserves the Quran intact without any change until the day of judgment. Why? Because it is the revelation from Allah for all, for all mankind to be, a guide, to be a guidance for them until the day of judgment. Because no scripture after the Quran, no prophet after the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so the Quran must stay well preserved to be clear guidance for all mankind until the day of judgment. The third conclusion, Muhammad is the true messenger of Allah. A man, a man lived in Mecca in the tribe of, in the tribe of Quraysh. 14 centuries ago, he was illiterate, could not write, could not read. Without any scientific training, he did not graduate from an university or an institute. He was a normal man to bring such facts, scientific facts that were discovered recently. Do you think that can or could he bring this from his own mind? No. So the only thing that we say for sure that he brought this from Allah, the one who created the whole universe and the one who knows every single detail in this universe. At the end, I would like to thank all of you for your attention and patience. Uh, and my next lecture is going to be about the Quran on human. And we'll see how the Quran described the development of human embryo inside the, the womb of the mother. Great thing. So uh, I think we, yeah, we spend more time. Yeah. I mean, so. No, well, we'll start. Yeah, we started it, yes.
Oh yeah, that's why it's still here. Oh, yeah, it's until seven thirty. So yeah. seven twenty-three. So we are we are we are not. I mean, because we started late, a little bit late. Yes. So if you would like to give any comment, any question, any uh, go ahead. I mean, we are here. We still have a few minutes. Otherwise. <laughs> mm. Alhamdulillah. This is because you are Muslims. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah reward you. Thank you, everyone.